I think sliding window problems are one of the hardest challenges that you can get asked in a data structures and algorithms interview, but it is one that you might come across, so you should be prepared to solve it. So let's talk about how to solve a sliding window problem with JavaScript. What's up everyone? My name is James Too Quick and I do weekly videos about JavaScript and web development in general. If you want to find more of my content, you can subscribe here or check out my newsletter at jamesqquick.com slash newsletter to get updates on what I'm doing on a weekly basis or content that I put out, etc. But today we're going to talk about a sliding window problem, which is a common problem that you might be asked in your live coding or data structures and algorithms interviews with, I don't know, XYZ company, who knows? So this is one that for me kind of blows my mind every time I do it. And I'm impressed with myself if I'm able to solve it. So I just did this inside of the learn, build, teach discord live. We do weekly versions of this. You can check it out at learnbuildteach.com. And so I just wanted to kind of recap what I did and talk through the solution to this sliding window problem. So what we're going to do is walk through this question on leak code. Now I've been going through the top interview, 150 questions on leak code. You can do whatever you want. Uh, you can sign up for a free account and follow this problem, which is problem 209 minimum size sub array sum. <laughs> it's a lot there. So let's just start to break this down. And I'm going to talk through this as if I was talking about it in an interview. Now, if you find alternative solutions or ways to make this better, just let me know in the comments below. I'd love to see that and kind of see how this evolves into maybe something better down the line. So we have a function. Uh, min sub array len length that takes in two parameters, a target and a nums array. And what we want to do is return the minimal length of a sub array. I call, I often call these a run. So a run of numbers, uh, is basically the equivalent of what they're calling a sub array. And we want to find the smallest sub array whose sum is greater than or equal to the target that's passed in. So the example here is we have this array and we're looking for a target of seven. So in this case, the answer is uh, two, and that's because there is a subarray with two items that then um, equals or is greater than the target value of seven. Now, the thing to know about this, and I think they specify this, is that this is consecutive numbers. Uh, do they say this? Who's some subarray? Who's some? Yeah. So I guess that infers that these are consecutive numbers. So a subarray in order, not mixing up the order of the array as is. So really quickly, I think a fun exercise or a good exercise to do would be to kind of talk through the brute force way to do this. And the brute force way would be an O of uh, N factorial. We'll talk about why in a minute solution, which is not optimal, but it is a solution. So let's just break this down really quickly. Let's say we start with one and basically what we are the first index, the first item, which is two. And basically what we want to do is start with the first item and say, is that greater than or equal to the target in this case, which is seven? No. So then we go to the next number and we add that. So three, two plus three equals five. Is that greater than or equal to seven? No. Then we go to one. This total is six, not greater than or equal to seven. Then we add on two, which is eight. Uh, so yes, and this is four numbers. So the subarray here is four numbers. So this would be the subarray in here, okay? Then the, for the next one, we could start with three and say not greater than seven plus one, not greater than seven plus two, not greater than seven plus four is greater than seven, which also is a sub array of four numbers. Now this next one is where it gets interesting. Then we start with one and then we add two, not greater than seven, add four equals seven. And that would be a run of three numbers. Okay. So now we're seeing as we go through this, uh, three numbers is less than four. Then next we could go two plus four, uh, not greater than equal to seven. Uh, then we go plus three, which is another run of three numbers. And then we have one more, which is four plus three and that equals seven. And that is two numbers. So this is kind of the way to think about this problem where you're starting with one number, you're adding everything until you get greater than the target. And then you go to the next number and do the same thing. Now the sliding window part of this, is recognizing patterns in here. And the pattern is on this first part, we are adding these four numbers, which means we already know, let's say this is for a total of eight, that total is important. So if we know on our first pass that it took us four numbers to get a total of eight, on the next pass, we know how much 
the first three numbers here are. And we know that because we can take the previous total, which was eight, and subtract the previous number, which was two. Okay, so now we're looking at this subarray and we can calculate its sum, not by doing the math ourselves, but by taking the previous sum of these four and then subtracting the previous number, if that makes sense. Then you recognize the same pattern here. One, two, four is also here. Then you see two, uh, two and four is also here. And then you see uh, four and three is also here. So those are basically those sliding windows where we're keeping track of the previous sum. Then as we iterate through, we're getting rid of the previous number and looking at now the previous sum. Now, the way I do this is I kind of break this up into a couple of different steps. The first step is to set a base case uh, for a starting point for our lowest number of uh, items in a subarray and then the lowest previous total. So what I do is I start with variables for that. So I'll start with the previous total. This is going to be zero. And then we'll also have a lowest, I call this lowest run count is zero as well. So this is basically saying the lowest run count is uh, as we look at from the first number until we get to the total that we're looking for, how many numbers is in that subarray, basically the subarray length. And then from there, we're going to start with our first variable, uh, I, and then we'll iterate through until we get to nums.length. And then uh, we'll increment this each time. And then inside of here, what we want to do is take our previous total and we want to plus equals or add on the value of the current uh, item, which is nums of I. So we're updating this total. And then we also, as we do this, are updating the lowest run count. So we're saying as we look at one number, we're adding that to the total, we're adding one to the count, then we go to the next number, add that to the total, increment the count, et cetera. Now what we wanna break here on is if the previous total is greater than the target, uh, then we wanna break, because we've basically found our initial base case for a run. And on this first case, basically what this is going to be is after this finishes, we're then going to have a prev total of eight and then a lowest run count of four. So notice that matches up with what we calculated down here as we did our like test iterations. From here, we now want to kind of look at the ongoing number. So go to the next number and we basically are looking for a run that is less than our lowest run count, which is for a run being the number of items in the array, if that makes sense. <clears throat> so basically what we want to do on each next iteration is take the previous total, subtract the previous number, and then if that value, so if this value is greater than or equal to our target, our target, that's one less number of items in that subarray that also accomplishes the goal of being greater than the target, which means we can decrement our lowest run count because we found a shortest run. Hopefully that makes sense. So let's see what this looks like. We're going to do uh, iterations. So we're going to say for let uh, I again equals zero. And I think you can, I think you can combine these into not having the base case like I do. It helps me kind of break this down in my mind. So if you have solutions that uh, get rid of the two separate for loops, let me know in the comments below as well. So we'll start at, um, we're actually gonna start at I1 because we've already done the first index or the first item. So now we're gonna go to the next one and we're gonna say uh, this I is less than, while it's less than length and then I plus plus. So a standard for loop here. And then we're gonna calculate the current total. So the current total is going to be the previous total, right? So the previous total initially is eight and then we're gonna subtract the item that's at the index before i. So nums of i minus one. So subtract the last number. So what we're looking at is as we get down here, we're looking at this previous total. We're subtracting the two, which gives us the sum for this three plus one plus two. Now, if that current total, current total is greater than our target, greater than or equal to actually, if it's greater than or equal to our target, we've now found a shorter run. So we can take our lowest 
uh, lowest run count and we can do minus minus to decrement that. And then we can update the previous total to be the current total. So in this case, this condition is not going to hit on the, on the iteration that we're on first. So the first one is starting with this three. We're looking at three plus one plus two, which is six, not greater than seven, which means we need to go into our else condition and update the previous total to be the current total, which is the previous, the previous, previous total minus the previous number. So it gives us this. Then we want to add on this one here. So the next number. So the current total plus nums. And then we want to calculate I plus lowest run count minus one. So we're saying from this run, we want to add on the next number after that run. All right. And then that's going to be the next total. Hopefully that makes sense. So uh, we will, let's just run through this really quickly. So we start with a previous total of eight, a lowest run count of four. We calculate our current total to be eight minus two. So that'll be six. Six is not greater than the target. So we update our previous total as six plus four. So that would make this 10. Okay. Then we go back through again and we're now at the one. So we say, so we look at the, the previous run, which is three, one, two, four. We subtract the three. So 10 minus three gives us seven for this. And seven is greater than or equal to our target. So we can see that we have a run of three, which is less than our previous run of four. So we're going to decrement the total run or the lowest run count. And then we're going to update the previous total to be the current total, which is seven. All right. So then we go to our two and we take our previous total, which is seven. We subtract the one, which is six. That doesn't meet our condition. So then we add on the last number, which is three. So that gives us nine. So then we'll have our nine here. And then we get to our four and we subtract the previous number, which was two. Nine minus two is seven, which does meet our condition, which means we lowest run count minus minus. We decrement that and then update the total to be seven. All right. That's kind of a lot. Hopefully that is making sense. Now there is one use case that we're missing here is what if there is no actual run inside of here? So this is an example, an array of eight ones or whatever. If you add all of those up, they become eight, which is less than 11, which means there is no run or no sub array in this array for that example that will uh, get greater than or equal to the sum that we're looking for. So what we can do is after we do our base case, we can basically check if the previous total is still less than the target. So if we've gone through the entire thing and calculated the total of the previous array and it's less than the target, we will just return zero. Otherwise, if we make it all the way to the end of this, we will return the lowest run count. All right, hopefully that works. Let's run this and test it to make sure I don't have any bugs in here. Hopefully it works. All right, so it's accepted. Um, there is some performance implications of this though, which is really interesting. So pause and let me know what is the big O notation of this? I say pause and let me know. Just let me know in the comments. Pause and think about it and calculate the big O notation for this. Okay, so big O notation for this is we're doing one iteration through our loop and then we're doing uh, additional iterations for each item in the array. So we're iterating through each item basically once and then plus one additional one. So that would basically be O of, I like to do this first, O of N plus one. I like to do this first uh, just so that we're thinking about it, but then recognize that constants basically are negligible and they go away. So this is basically an O of N solution. Now, if you go down, it says, if you figure out the O of N solution, try coding another solution for O of N log N. Now, those types of solutions are not ones that I'm good at. I just haven't done them in a long time. So I might come back and do an updated video using that. If you're interested, let me know in the comments below. But I'm curious if you know how to do that, let me know your thoughts on how you would solve it with an O of N log N from a performance perspective, uh, how you would do that. Let me know. Uh, anyway, I might come back and do more. Let me know if you enjoy these types of challenges. I think they're super fun. I think they are great for passing interviews, even if I don't think they're the best indicator of a good developer for interviews. It's an essential part of your interview process. It doesn't mean I agree with it. Anyway, I just hope that you're as prepared as possible. So hopefully you enjoyed it. If you're interested in more JavaScript and web development content, uh, let me know. 
don't let me know. Just subscribe to the channel. And then also, if you want to know updates about content that I'm working on, check out my newsletter at jamesqquick.com newsletter. Thanks for checking out the video. Hope you enjoyed it and I'll catch you next time.